Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher, uh, Lean Frontiers, and I'm calling in from my home office in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm joined uh, by our presenter who is calling in from Germany, uh, actually near Stuttgart, Germany, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just a two uh, very quick points of logistics uh, before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded. You'll get an email shortly after we finished with a link to the recording. Uh, please do share this with others in your organization. We've also set aside some time for question and answer. So if you do have questions, please submit them throughout the presentation that will allow time for us to moderate those questions. Well, let me turn now to our presenter, Tilo Swartz. Tilo is a management trainer, uh, personal coach, and keynote speaker. He supports organizations and managers uh, to successfully lead change and continuous improvement. He developed much of the experience that we're going to be talking about today uh, as he nav helped navigate a crisis while working as plant manager for Festool during 2008 global financial meltdown. And on a personal note, uh, I'll add that Tilo has actually been a regular part of the annual Kata Summit that Lean Frontiers runs. Uh, and he also has created a unique course of his own uh, called the Kata Dojo. Been very successful over this past year as you roll that out really globally. So it's safe to say that uh, he is one of the most experienced Kata practitioners on the planet and it is an honor to have him with us here today. So with that, Tilo, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. So thank you, thank you, Dwayne. Um, and uh, welcome from my side. Um, Dwayne, thank you very much for pulling this webinar together in such a short, short time, but we just felt we wanted to share uh, some experience in the situation uh, we're in. As we're, so as we're facing new and unknown challenges all over the globe, I personally believe our partners, families, teams, and communities need us now to be leaders and coaches more than ever. Well, and to fulfill that role, I think here's number one most important thing. We have to become and foster a scientific way of thinking. And most of all, we have to refrain from reacting frantically, losing our head. And uh, we can do this by practicing the following four steps we'll be talking about in this webinar today. So number one is determine the direction. Number two is grasp the current condition. Number four is establish short-term target conditions. And number four, go quickly by experiment. So in this webinar, I'm going to show you how these four simple steps can help you and your team to successfully and with confidence navigate the unknown territory ahead. Just as a note uh, before we get started, so there's not going to be a lot of slides. Uh, you can download the, the full script I have for this webinar later on with the link I will share with you at the end of this webinar. So. Those of you familiar with the improvement kata that Mike Rother developed and published in his book, Toyota Kata, will recognize the pattern in the four steps I just mentioned. And actually today, I will add a fifth step, or actually it's more a pre-step that I think is very helpful right now, but more about that later. So why is this training called Kata in Crisis? And what is a kata? Well, kata is the Japanese word for training routine, and uh, it's a structured routine you practice to learn something new until its parent becomes a habit, a natural and intuitive way of doing something. And uh, recent brain research shows that our everyday activities, so what we do and even what we think, is not as rational as we might believe. Actually, most of our daily life, acting and thinking, is controlled by our habits. While that is a great approach for many situations because it allows us to react fast, it gets a bit more tricky and actually becomes an obstacle when we need to change our behavior. Because habits always pull us back to what we've been doing. 
in the past. And even if we know, we should be doing something else. So to give an actual example here, that is why it is currently so difficult to restrain from shaking hands if a person meets you and stretches out. So there's an impulse to grab the hand. And then even if we involve thinking, we're not as logical as we might believe. So in his famous book, Thinking Fast and Slow, Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman describes a big number of brain biases we regularly fall victim to. Let me just mention two that are strongly at play right now in the crisis we're facing. Number one is the social proof bias. It pushes us to do the same what we see other people do. So actually, that's probably why we buy more toilet paper than we need, even if we know it does not make any sense. But we think an extra package can't be wrong if everybody's doing it. Better safe than sorry. Bias number two strongly at play right now is the action bias. It pushes us to jump into action, even if we don't know that this action makes sense or has an effect. We better do anything than do nothing. That was actually discovered by an Israeli researcher, Bar Eli, who analyzed penalty shots in soccer and goalies' reactions to it. His findings? Well, statistically, shots are evenly distributed to the left, the center, and the right side of the goal. So for a goalie, it would actually be best to just stay in the middle, because chances are the highest in the middle if a ball is shot to the middle that you catch the ball. So what do goalies actually do? Well, nearly in 50% of the cases, they jump to the left. And in the other 50% of the cases, they jump to the right. They seldom stay in the middle. So statistically, that does not make any sense. So why do we act that way? Well, just imagine for a second, you're the goalie standing passively in the middle as the ball smashes into the left corner while you sheepishly kind of look behind it. 60,000 people burst out into a roar. See that dumb goalie? Then he move. In contrast, if you can do a dive into one corner, well, even if it's wrong, people will say, what a dive, great goalie, great action. You can't be right every time. So this is exactly what is happening to us right now in this situation in the crisis. We jump to action frantically just to do something and we copy what we see others doing. Hardly any rational thinking involved, we could say. Well, the improvement cadre can help us to escape that trap by practicing a scientific way of thinking. Now, I think, is the perfect time to apply it or start it if you haven't practiced it yet. It will not only help you to navigate this crisis, but over time build new habits, habits that are needed to navigate the new and unknown territory and head. So the improvement kind of provides a core pattern with the four steps for navigating unknown territory. However, we understand that we don't learn a new approach like in a leapfrog way, but rather step by step. So recent research also shows that learning and building habits, it's best to start small, actually very small, and then build step by step on top of it. That is what start a kata are for simple routines to start with. So in the next minutes, we will go through the four steps of the improvement kata and discuss specific starter kata you can practice right now. Before we do that, let's come back to the pre-step I mentioned. So what is it? I think that is important to kind of put in advance. It's a step I call calm your mind. Well, being calm in our mind and being able to focus our thoughts is a precondition, I think, for making good decisions, helpful coaching, and also installing confidence in the people around us. The situation right now actually reminds me, and, and Dwayne, you referenced that, of the crisis 2007, 2008, when I was a plant manager at a German tool manufacturer. And we had to actually, for the first time in the company's history, lay off a substantial number of people. We didn't know how long things would stay bad, if there would be another wave of layoffs necessary. This was tough. Emotions were high. And I still remember coming in in the morning, my mind already boiling and spinning. 
So here are two steps that are helpful to calm your mind in a crisis. Number one, going for the long run. So don't let yourself be carried away by wishful thinking, neither be paralyzed by fear. Well, we could think of Admiral Stockdale's paradox. You might know that. So when interviewed by Jim Collins for his book, Good to Great, Stockdale was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for eight years. So when Collins interviewed him and asked, well, who didn't survive? His answer was quite surprising. He said, well, the optimists. So what he actually means here is that those that set their hope on being free by a specific date, let's say Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, were devastated when their hopes were repeatedly disappointed. So COVID-19 is what I see as a twofold crisis. We understand health-wise and also economically. And I think the later is probably going to be the longer one. So actually, we shouldn't build our strategy on mere hope that it will be over soon. We don't know. Instead, we should retain faith that we will prevail in the end and at the same time confront reality and go in for the long run. How long it'll ever take. If it's short, we're all happy. If not, we're in for the long run. Well, that's what you call this Stockdale paradox. Number two, write down your rationale for difficult decisions. Well, when making a difficult decision, actually the hard part comes when you put it into action, because then doubts start to creep in. Is this the right decision? What happens if it's wrong? Or even worse, if it's a tough decision and emotions arise, um, then doubts creep in a lot. So I'm not saying we shouldn't change a decision if we, let's say, at a later point, find evidence that it's wrong. However, continuously oscillating between doing it and not doing it is fatal when things move fast. So for a remedy, write down the rationale and the hypothesis, the expectation underlying the difficult decisions you and your team make. If doubts and emotion arise, read through it. So now let's jump into improvement kata and step one is determine the direction. So it might seem difficult right now to have a clear direction amidst all the chaos and uncertainty. Existing strategy plans seem inadequate. Budget plans, target 2020, targets 2020, defined last year, off track by far. So a situation like this drives many of us into reacting frantically with no direction at all. And you know that's not a good way to lead our teams. Think of a ship and its crew in a raging storm. So they will keep their destination in mind. Yes, they might have to deviate from the ideal course due to the storm, but they do it purposefully. And they might even, until the storm calms down, go with the wind and purposefully align their direction with the waves to prevent capsizing. So I'm not saying stay on course, calm what, what may but letting the boat spin arbitrarily is the worst thing to do in a storm. So then how can we determine the direction right now? And wouldn't it be great if we had a navigation process in place, a process that helps us and our teams to determine the direction for the next period of time and reassesses periodically. So here's, here's the process, four steps, grasp, assess, focus, and slice. So step one, grasp the, gru the crucial facts. There is an overload of information, especially right now. Choosing and focusing on the relevant is very important. So choose what facts and information you need to make decisions for your business. Focus on them and get them firsthand. Ignore the noise of the non-relevant majority of information. We will get to a starter kata for doing that later on. Step two, assess risks, needs, and opportunities. So every situation, even a crisis, always has two sides to it, the bad and the good. It's just that we sometimes get so overwhelmed by the bad side that it paralyzes us. Taking the following four perspectives helps to identify the relevant risks and opportunities your people, your customers, 
your suppliers, and your business. So you could ask the following three questions for each of these perspectives. Number one, what are the risks? Number two, what are the needs and worries right now? And what are the opportunities? Step three, focus relentlessly. So in any kind of situation, there's always more options as well as more needs than we have resources for. Defocusing and spreading our resources, including our time and attention, happens all too easily. Well, although the rational part of our brain is well aware of Pareto's law, 80-20, we still believe that the more we do, the better it is. But actually, in the end, we achieve none of it at all. So here is a process to use for that. Use stop amplified invent to prevent this trap. With your team, ask the following three questions. What do we need to stop right now because it's harmful or not contributing enough to our business? Choose the top three. What should we amplify as much as we can as it offers most benefit? Choose the top two. And third, what would offer the greatest benefit if we could invent and deliver it to our customers? Choose just one. Step four, slice the challenge. If we steer toward a challenge that seems too far away, it will seem impossible to achieve, especially when the overall situation is very tough like it is right now. Also, we want, don't want to overreact, but plan scenario-based and move in incremental steps. So that is why we slice the challenge. So with your team, go through your stop, amplify, and invent and ask yourself, where do we want to be? Where do we need to be regarding these three aspects in six to eight weeks from now? From now. So here's a starter kata for you to do. Practice this. Grasp the group of facts quickly and firsthand. Assess the risks, needs, and opportunities with the four perspectives. Focus relentlessly with stop, amplify, invent and then write down where you need to be in six weeks from now. So now let's move on to step number two of the improvement kata, which is grasp the current condition. In a situation where things move fast and change, the existing way of measuring and displaying information is often inadequate, not relevant, too slow, and also our brain often focuses on the wrong information driven by a very basic instinct, fight or flight. And this reminds me of an Air France flight accident. And it is believed that the pilots were so taken up with one particular flight instrument, which was the altitude gauge, that they overlooked the crucial information that could have saved the plane. So as the plane was losing more and more altitude, they tried to counteract by pulling up until the plane stalled. Well, their brain actually really prevented them from seeing the solution to the puzzle biased by zooming in more and more on the one thing they were trying to counteract. So how to grasp the current condition? Well, I use the following approach for grasping the current condition. Step back, choose, display. So in a crisis, it's, it's, it's especially important to take a step back and get an overview of the whole picture. This helps us to see the connection, prevents us from zooming in on the wrong information, just because we have always monitored it. Start a kata. You could practice this. With your team, choose the top three facts or pieces of information you need to know about the situation for each of the following three areas, your business performance, your customers, and your supply chain. Next, decide who gets the facts on what, split up and get the facts firsthand. Afterwards, after 24 hours, get together again, share the information and display it in a way so that everybody can get an overview. Let's move on, choose. So what is the relevant information right now? That might be completely different from what we're used to monitor. 
So relevant is, of course, what gives us information on the critical aspects of survival. Those of you familiar with the improvement kata call this the outcome metric. However, that's not enough. So to really understand how and when things are changing, we need to monitor the relevant causes for the main problems as well as the progress we achieve with our actions. So this is what we call the process or the progress matrix. We want to understand what is the effect of our actions in a short-term perspective. And last but not least, to take deliberate and concerted action, the data on the current condition needs to be up to date, that is today, and displayed in a way so that everybody's on the same page. So for a starter kata, practice this. Define your top three metric or indicators to monitor the critical aspects for survival. Second, define process metric for each of your stop amplifying event goals. And third, set up a way to measure these metrics at high frequency every day and display them so that everybody in your team can get an overview. This could be, of course, physically on a wall, or right now, this could also be an electronic dashboard if your team's working remotely. Step three of improvement kata, establish short-term target condition. So we understand that in a crisis, we must move quickly. And of course, we must move in a concerted way. And only if we align all our efforts throughout the organization will we achieve what we strive for. Again, the main obstacle that prevents us from doing so are caused by the way our brain works. We usually jump to action or we freeze and wait for others to take the risk and move first. So I'm just wondering, wouldn't it be great if we would have a concerted action throughout the organization focused on stop, amplify, and vent? How can we achieve that? Well, we can achieve that by slicing our challenges into weekly objectives, which we call target conditions. So how to establish short-term target conditions? Well, a target condition actually describes where we want to be regarding a specific topic of our challenge in a very short period of time. Go for a week here. Also, we should implement a process that ensures that we have target conditions in place on the team level, as well as on the individual level, so everybody can contribute and stay focused. Well, just now talking about that, that reminds me of the time when we had a malfunction in one of the electronic components used in about 30% of our products. And we had to synchronize efforts between our suppliers, purchasing quality assurance, production, and R&D, and teams actually being spread out over three continents. And we really had a hard time to keep deliveries up. So at that time, we started a method I call the big three by three approach, which I still use to stay focused. So it works like this. At the beginning of each week, I define the three most important goals I need to achieve this week in regards to my longer term challenge. So that's my big three for the week. And then in my personal planning routine for the day, I look them up, write them down, what are the top three tasks for the day to get closer to my big three of the week. So big three for the week, big three for the day, that makes my set of big three by three. So here's a starter kata you could practice with your team. Define a set of team big three for the week. What do we want to achieve as a team this week regarding our six weeks challenge on stop, amplify, invent? Ask each team member or sub team if you have a larger area of responsibility to define their weekly big three in the same way. And then define your daily big three for yourself and encourage your team to do that as well. Just on a side note here, if you have a personal morning and evening routine, build this starter kata into it. That's a good way of linking that with the big three. Last but not least, we come to step four of the improvement kata, which is go quickly by experiment. So adaptiveness, we understand, is based on, of course, going quickly and going by experiment. So step by step in an iterative process, test the unknown territory ahead. 
So that means taking small steps, getting immediate feedback, learning and adapting accordingly. And of course, all at high speed. However, this is of course easier said than done and reminds me of the time when a factory burned down at one of our main suppliers who produced parts for nearly every one of our products. So I was the plant manager at that time and within about 42 hours, our production lines and actually our whole factory came to a stop. So we jumped into crisis mode, but soon I discovered two problems. So we had a morning all hands meet up and I soon realized this takes much too long. We need time to work on problems, not just for discussing them was my thought. Also, people were waiting for our morning meeting to take decisions rather than deciding themselves. Ouch, that really hurt. So here's what we learned. Our all hands meeting were taking so long because we were discussing problems in detail and trying to problem solve in the meeting. So all hands was our lesson learned should be focused on aligning the team regarding what we need to do next as well as establishing common understanding of the current situation, which might change every day. A major trap also in this crisis situation is to start micromanaging. That takes away initiative from people and dramatically slows down the problem solving process. Sounds familiar? So how can we go quickly by experiment? And actually this section now pulls together uh, what we've discussed so far. First, make sure everybody has a clear personal focus. So that's where the big three by three are very helpful as a starter kata. Establish quick feedback. Make sure everybody gets the relevant and necessary information. So that is where the visualization of the current condition and the all hands meeting comes in. Ensure quick communication. Don't waste your people's time in meetings. Make sure to identify where help is needed. Look for interdependencies and resolve lockups when people have to wait for others. And above all, refrain from micromanaging. If you insist on taking all the decisions, approving all the steps, all you achieve is a full stop. Give freedom to act and then coach rather than giving directives to help is needed. So here's the last starter kata for you to practice. Have a very short daily all hands, best in the morning to align the team and refrain from problem solving in the all hands. Number two, instead establish short frequent interactions one-on-one -on -one or in small groups for problem solving and use the five questions you find in the download to structure your daily all hands meeting. So what we've been talking about right now in the past 20 minutes is how can we navigate in chaos and unknown territory? And actually, this has a lot to do with things we've been talking about for years now, that is our world getting more volatile and unpredictable. That we need to become more adaptive, more in innovative. So what I see right now is that this crisis we're facing with COVID-19 is not just an event, it's part of a trend. So of course, it's an extreme form of this trend, but once the crisis is over, this trend of the world becoming more volatile will continue and we will still have to have this kind of skill building we need to navigate the unknown territory. So practicing the improvement kata and starting with the starter kata I've just explained benefits us twofold. First of all, we can master the crisis right now and navigate. And secondly, excuse me, we can develop a new way of thinking and acting that is needed for tomorrow. So when we come outside, out on the other side of the crisis, we're actually on the right side of, of history. So if you start applying that, uh, of course, there might be some questions coming up to, that are specific to your business. So what we've done here is we thought about that, um, Dwayne and I, and we, we thought, well, first of all, we want to offer this webinar to give a quick reaction. Secondly, um, we kind of thought, well, if questions come up, what could we do? And we decided to offer an online training. So we have two options for you. You could go for an online training over four weeks with a weekly meeting uh, with a group of eight. 
where I give you more information on how to start with the starter kata here, and where we also can discuss how they apply uh, to your specific business, and you'll be also learning from your peers. And then we have a second option for you, uh, which is an additional accelerator after the first four weeks that will help you to roll out what you've learned and give your teams the skills that are necessary in the long run to meet and master challenges and navigate unknown territory. So um, we also thought, well, how could we do this here? And um, of course, we would like to give as much as possible free. So we decided on sharing this webinar here for free, uh, but put a little price tag on the options uh, for the online training uh, because we also have a back office team here and we want to pay fair wages. However, there is um, our 14 days money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you can skip out um, halfway. Anyways, um, so coming now to what I discussed, and I understand this is a lot of information and um, I, I assume and I'm pretty sure you want to reread that. So um, if you go to the following link here, tiloschwartz.com, Kata in Crisis, you will find the script for what we just shared um, fully written and you can download, go through it and all the starter Kata are marked in there for you to start right away. You will also find a link button to the online trainings I just mentioned. So I hope you enjoyed the thoughts uh, I shared and um, back to you Duane and uh, to open for any questions that uh, might arise here. Yeah, thank you Tilo. Uh, we did have some questions come in. Uh, so let me kind of field these. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, quickly running experiments. Uh, this person is asking for clarification. Are you simply describing PDCA in that uh, in that context? Well, there is, of course, a, the, we can use the underlying structure of uh, PDCA. Um, however, we should be very quick on that. Um, so uh, link the PDCA, if you're doing PDCA, link it to uh, your target conditions coming from your uh, big three. So make sure that we're not arbitrarily uh, just going by trial and error, but linking to the target conditions we have, um, having a hypothesis of uh, what will happen when we do our next step. So check out, uh, just a quick advice here, check out the download and there is um, five questions in there for kind of challenging uh, experiments, uh, the coaching kind of questions. So you might want to use that uh, to see if we're really running experiments because um, I know from my own experience, especially in a tough situation, it's so easy to, you know, like just the soccer goalie jump, jump to action. Um, so it's very good to have a coach in place now or a person that, challenges uh, here what we're doing by using the five questions okay so this this may be a yes or no uh, answer Tilo but somebody's asking if you've had any experience with doing uh, the improvement kata the coaching kata uh, in a video format so in a remote setting perhaps like this oh yeah like um, there's a couple of situations like um, when I was um, still working for that German tool manufacturer, uh, we, ha we had the situation where uh, our quality department had to go uh, kind of offshore uh, to deal with that situation I mentioned with the electronic defect. Uh, so, and, and we just did that, um, the, the coaching cycles online. Um, and what, what you, what help, what's helpful here is if you have like, the formats. I would suggest um, if you're familiar with the storyboard. Um, otherwise, um, check out here Kyoto Kata practice practice guide. Uh, if you're familiar with the storyboard, use the T template and use the experimenting record. And if you find a, an easy way to kick them forth and back so that you're on the same page, um, uh, that that definitely helps. But yes, uh, online coaching cycles are are good. Um, it works. Okay. Uh, just answering a, a frequent question here. Um, 
the uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be sent out to you within uh, within an hour uh, after the presentation ends. So you, you can look forward to that. Um, some other questions here. Uh, the situations are uh, changing hourly right now. It seems. Um, how do you define a current condition when the ch the current condition is changing from hour to hour? Well, absolutely. So, but um, what I suggest here is um, that you define your process for taking in new information. And yes, we need new information, but we don't need all information. So you might want to put purposefully blockers, does that work? Blockers in place so that you only get the relevant information. So I'll give an example. So in the situation right now, it's not, it doesn't help to check news and social media on an hourly basis. It actually only prevents us from working on what's relevant for us and our team. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking here of these three sieves of uh, Socrates, you could use them. Um, it goes like that. So is the information you're bringing to me, is it true? If it's not true, go, go away. Uh, see if number two, uh, is it important? So is it relevant for us? So does it, first of all, relate to our kind of big three or our to our uh, stop, amplify and invent? Uh, is there is there a relation there? Um, because also we have to be aware that we get information on what we can influence. You know, right now we can we can influence what we do. We cannot influence what the media does. We cannot influence what other people do. We cannot um, influence what politicians decide. Um, and then Steve, number number three is uh, if it's true but not relevant, is it good? Or in other words, if we share it, will it uplift our spirits? That we might kind of get through with it as well. So uh, just design a process here, um, maybe time-wise. Okay, I'll only do it in the morning for one hour, and that's the three things I check. Good enough. And then let's focus on what we can do and change right now. So this is a very specific question. Somebody's asking if uh, you can show a storyboard to show show an example, and I. My guess is that there's plenty of uh, plenty of examples out out there. Um, well, I can on probably pull up, website. pull up one here. Sure. Um, uh, let's see here. Give me a minute. We can move on with the next question while I pull it. Yeah, up we'll, here. we'll see if you can uh, multitask here while you do that. Uh, so, <laughs> just uh, I'm going to ask this in a little bit of a different way than uh, this person asked it, but. Uh, and leave it more open-ended. Uh, oftentimes in situations like this, uh, you'll hear somebody say, hey, it's better to do anything than to do nothing. Maybe speak to that. So, well, actually that is what our brain says, do anything than do nothing. Um, yeah. So I still believe that it is important what we do and we should, um, because we have limited resources and just acting, you know, in circles or selecting forth and back doesn't doesn't really help. Um, so I would phrase it differently. I don't think it's important to do anything than nothing. It's more get started in doing what you need to do. Or here's here's a sentence I, I a sentence I like. I even have it here hanging in my my office here. I, I can see it right now. Um, I'll, I'll translate it here from German. It says. We, we don't do the things because they are so difficult. The things are so difficult because we don't do them. So I would suggest analyze and focus first and then get going quick. That's, I like that better. Okay. So uh, back to the storyboard. I don't know if it would be easier, uh, Tilo, to maybe just send out some links to uh, some examples. Yeah, that I'll might do be that. Out there. I'll do that. Okay. I'm okay. actually going on on my site here and checking it out. Yeah, I think if you just uh, if you Google uh, Toyota Kata, uh, and I, I think that would be all you need to do. Mike Rother's uh, website is one of the first up there, and there's a tremendous number of resources. Uh, available and Mike Rother is the the author of Toyota Kata and he's provided a, a great lineup of resources for free. 
Um, questions are coming in very rapidly here, so we'll likely have to, uh, I'll, I'll get to a few more, but we'll likely have to maybe answer some of these offline. Um, a this is a, a um, so here is a, I found something here. If you, if you go here on the site, there you can see like um, that is kind of the the storyboard. If you Google Toyota Cata, we'll send out the link and you can you can see it. So you can see the storyboard here. Okay, so um, it displays target condition, current condition, experimenting record, and obstacle parking lot if you want to. But um, as I mentioned before, target condition, current condition, experimenting record that is uh, important part. Um, but Again, um, this is not so much about the format, you know, in, in, um, uh, for practicing, this is the storyboard we suggest. However, in the, the fast moving situation we're in right now, don't worry too much about the format. It's more about the topics on here. So make sure everybody is aware of, of the target condition, like display your weekly team big three so everybody can see them every day, you know, stick your big three for the week to your screen. Um, current condition, have that dashboard in place so we see the relevant information and we'll use the experimenting record so that we're doing experiments rather than uh, trial and error. Um, don't, don't get um, hung up here with, with uh, details in the format yeah. right now. So you could probably have anticipated this question, Tilo, uh, but I want to go ahead and ask it because there are a number of people asking this. but. When you have uh, supervisors, bosses, managers who are um, asking you to get things done now, um, how do you slow down? How do you work and walk your teams through this methodical process? So how, how do you influence up, I guess, is the, the question. Sorry, could you repeat that last one again, please? So the, the, the basic question is, how do you influence up? to the management, to the executive level, uh, when they're wanting, um, uh, they're wanting answers now, they're wanting fast action. Um, how do you slow down and walk your teams through uh, addressing target conditions in this right, right. manner you're talking so just, about? Just two quick tips on here. So one is full transparency on current condition and what we're working on. So all what we've been talking about, um, understanding current condition and having a clear focus for the week, communicate that up. That is very helpful. Uh, communicate what the next step, what the next period will be. Uh, then with your team, just go through the steps. Just go through the steps, right? So um, usually when we are asked for a report, um, like the classic way is get the thing solved, right? So we want to hear the solution. We want to hear that we're done. Um, however, in, in a crisis situation, um, that is not possible. We don't know yet how to solve it. So, but what we can do is have full disclosure on what we know right now, where we're we going, and what's going to be the next action. So, kind of thinking that improvement cata pattern. Um, let's put that up for a while again here. Here. So, if you can communicate, what is if you can communicate up? What's the direction? Where are we now? And what's like the next period? Where do we plan to be by end of this week? And then what's the action we're taking right now? Um, use this structure for communication. Okay. Um, let's go with uh, with one more question here. Um, first of all, uh, could you bring up that link again to the, sure. the Cotton Crisis website? We've had several people ask for that again. Here you go. Yeah, perfect. Um, so do you have any uh, recommendations or best practices for not slipping back into old habits? Well, basically, there's there's two. And um, you might want to check out the habit research of BJ Fogg. If you're interested, we can also share some links on that. There's good short very short YouTube videos on that. But one is, well, it's actually, I'll give you three. One is start small, start absolutely small. This is why we talk about these starter kata. So what is like, don't, don't think of, I have to do the full thing, right? So if you want to, I'll give you an example from sports. So if you want to have a like workout routine, you want to kind of squeeze in your week, uh, go for this. 
Um, the day you want to do your run, put out your running shoes in the morning. And if you manage to put them on in the evening when you come back, good enough. So good enough. Start with just putting on your shoes and then build on that. Um, second advice, start immediately. Start now. Third advice, if you can link it to something that is a habit that is already existing, let's say you in a, in a business context, that would be uh, a structure, for example, a communication structure you already have, a, a meeting structure you have, like you might have a shop for management level one, two, three communication. So ask yourself, how can I squeeze into that structure that exists, what we need right now? Don't come up with a completely new structure. Um, or you might have a coaching kata cascade. You might have been working with that, with the with kata culture book, the orange book um, that Mike and, and Garrett wrote. Um, so if you have that, use that. Uh, how can we kind of now focus on our big three and the stop, amplify, invent um, challenge we're, we're putting out there? So start a kata, start small start now if possible link it to something a habit that is already a structure a process that is already existing yeah okay well uh tilo we, we talked uh, before we got on the webinar here that our hypothesis is there may be more questions than there are normally and that is the case <laughs> so what i'll do is i'll compile these questions and uh, send them along and and perhaps you can go through and maybe uh, answer these and we can send them back out to the group. Does that sound fair enough? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so I think the one one question you mentioned was, I, I'll just pick out that one as the last one maybe, because I think that's also important. Um, so that actually refers back to our direction. And um, in the situation we're in right now, sometimes uh, well, people have asked me in, in a similar webinar here in Germany, uh, so how does going by experiment and having a direction go together in these times? Um, because we might even have to kind of, you know, uh, do shift our, our direction. Sure. So here's a quick thought. In the, nobody knows how this is gonna work out and how long it's gonna take. So, um, basically for our direction we have to go scenario based um so uh, uh, when when this happens then we will have to align the course if that happens we will have to align that way so uh, that also links to current condition display um so for your direction you could you could go like i have three different scenarios uh we start small think in iterative kind of steps and define the point in time when you say, okay, if in four weeks, this and that hasn't happened, we'll take the right turn. If it has happened, we'll take the left turn. Uh, so just put these trigger decision or trigger places in and also make them visual on your, on your current condition. Okay, great. Thank, All right. thank you so very just, much. Just to be clear on that, um, I know we've, I, I, I kind of, Blasted out a lot of stuff now. Um, that PDF here on that link I just I'm just showing here at the bottom of my screen is already online, so it's there. You can you can download it and you can you can go for it. Okay. Uh, and, and I encourage you in in the matter of do it now, reread it tonight, kind of um, go through it and, and start practicing the start Kata. Great. Well, Tilo, on on behalf of the Lean Frontiers team and and all of today's participants, uh, let me thank you for your time today. In these, uh, these challenging times right now, it's really a breath of fresh air to get on and at least connect in some way like this with the outside world and uh, to, to learn and, and to grow. And to those of you who are watching, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your dedication to not only improving yourselves, but improving your teams, your companies, and, and really our, our world. So uh, until we uh, gather again soon, whether it be online or at one of uh, Lean Frontier's future summits, uh, please do stay well, uh, stay encouraged, and go do good things. Thanks much.